It was almost right in the centre of the village, but it was very secluded. Some residents commented they've lived in the village 75 years and didn't know that Sugar Acre existed. It is a very nice site, it's very, very peaceful. A commercial farmer would never want to use a field this size. It's always it's, it's either a pony field or something. So by putting over to Fulton Access Trust and then into Fulton and Bloom, it's a, a cracking facility for community groups to use. I'm Doug Young. I'm the chair of uh, Fulton and Garden Group. I got involved originally. Just you wanted the village to look nice, so I helped out originally. In fact, I put this polyton up in the 1990s. The people who access it, there's about 50 of volunteers, so there's never a day without people coming in. Well, this is a community space uh, used for growing plants for the village with 14 allotments. And there are people in the village who don't have gardens, so come to a place where there's a, a garden that's safe and sheltered and they feel it's really valuable. I'm uh, Gregor Milne. I'm uh, the vice chairman of the Falkland Gardening Group. I think the community as a whole has benefited from having the, the site here, from the fact of, that uh, people from who work on this site go out and fill the baskets, fill the tubs with plants and flowers and make the environment round about the village look better and cleaner and happier. Then internally, people who are working internally in Sugar Acre on the site here, they're growing their own food. They're taking part in community activity, they're meeting new people, they're talking to new people. So it's a benefit not just from the practical point of view that you get food, but you've also got the benefit of speaking to other people as well and being part of the, the larger group. There are some very small internal allotments, as it were, some raised beds in uh, some of the polytunnels, which are designed for people who have more difficulty gardening a, a larger allotment allowing people to enjoy the uh, adventure of growing their own food. The advantage to the landowner is really that his, his land is being looked after. It's not going to be abused. I mean, there's no fly tipping, there's no uh, destruction of property, that sort of thing, because the, uh, the land is being used and maintained by the people that are on the land. It's a very good way of, of showing that derelict land or land that isn't being used to its full potential, a lot more can be done with it. And uh, the communities, whether that be the landowner or the people who live in the surrounding area, can come together and look after it and uh, get the benefit of it. Every time Ninian comes in, he's always surprised that we're doing something different. So I think he probably trusts us to do the right thing for the for the group, for the village, for the site. If we have any issues, we go and just chat or uh, ask any and can we do such and such. So you keep an open relationship, you be honest. If there's problems going on, we say we've got this difficulty, the latest one, we need to, we've got a water leak to sort. Ask for his permission for doing the open gardens. And it's, been a, it's keeping an open and honest relationship. And I think that's the best way. And he can see that the day-to-day -day activities, all the flowers around the village, and the vegetables spilling into the village, he can see that as well. So I think he's quite pleased with what's going on. And it keeps the land ticking over, getting used, which is what, from his perspective, if you, the land's getting used, is getting maintained, I think that's one of his biggest concerns.